I'm Kamali, taking you through some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world. On Newsfeed today, a documentary which challenges some ideas about renewable energy faces calls to be banned. The propaganda art of Vietnam finds a new audience in the age of COVID-19. How bad is your background? A Twitter account rates people's homes. And the first look at the new NASA helicopter that will go to Mars. And top of our news feed, Planet of the Humans, a new documentary produced by Michael Moore has caused controversy online because it challenges some of the ideas some people have about how we keep the Earth habitable for humans. It's been slammed as being supportive of the fossil fuel industry. Its defenders say it's a forensic look at how some environmentalists are influenced by corporate concerns. Take a look at this. I don't think the people in charge are near nervous enough. I'm 100% for a climate future where we focus on humanity, not technology, as the cornerstone of our civilization. The new Michael Moore movie goes in the opposite direction. It's dangerous eco-fascism and population control promoted by a cast of white guys. Whistleblower, the man in everyone's face. You've seen this happen over the last decade. How oh, they're all they all they all have gone green. Oh, they're all they all tout the big green thing and and they saw basically that enough of us believed in green because we want to live, we want this planet to live. And so, and so they saw, wow, there's the supply and demand right there. The demand is for green. Let's give them green and let's make a lot of money off. for some other stories you need to know this Thursday. Well, this is from the British Museum's Twitter account. They've made 4.5 million objects and 1.9 images available to view on their website. It's all in high resolution and the museum says you can see detail you'd never actually be able to see if you went to the museum and looked through the glass cabinet. Amazon's Indian, Canadian, German, French and British websites have been placed on a blacklist by the Trump administration. They're now listed on a notorious markets register as the US says they facilitate the trade in fake goods. The listing has no legal bearing and has been described as a political move by Amazon as they say Trump dislikes Amazon boss Jeff Bezos. Two billion people have downloaded TikTok. The app, which lets you create or watch 15 seconds videos, is one of the fastest growing waste of times available to people right now. It's made by a Chinese company called ByteDance and is most popular in India, which accounts for 30% of downloads. The new Berlin airport, which has been planned since 1996, is finally set to open in October of this year, although many are skeptical that that opening date will be kept. It's been delayed for at least nine years.
Now, COVID-19 has killed more than 220,000 people. Here is a look at some of those whose lives have been taken. Former Pakistani first-class cricketer, the 50-year-old became the first cricketer to succumb to coronavirus in Pakistan. A 16-year-old French schoolgirl with no underlying conditions became one of the youngest in Europe to die from COVID-19. Turkish doctor, he had lost his mother, father and a sibling to the virus. He left behind a widow and two daughters. At the age of five, she developed a rare form of meningitis and swelling in the brain due to the coronavirus. She was the daughter of first responders in Detroit in the US. Acclaimed Iraqi architect, he was known as the father of modern Iraqi architecture as he designed Iraq's most famous buildings. He passed away in London after contracting the coronavirus. A 91-year-old American animator who worked on iconic Disney films including The Lion King, The Little Mermaid and Pocahontas. An 86-year-old Cameroon-born saxophonist, he fused African rhythms with funk to become one of the most influential musicians in world dance music. He died in a hospital in Paris. A 53-year-old British doctor, he warned Prime Minister Boris Johnson about the lack of protective gear. He worked for the NHS for more than 20 years after migrating from Bangladesh. At the age of 21, she became one of the UK's youngest coronavirus victims. She had no pre-existing health problems. A Somali music pioneer, he was known as one of the founding fathers of modern Somali music. He passed away at the age of 92 in London. The five-month-old daughter of a New York firefighter died from the coronavirus after spending a month in the hospital. He was one of the most influential African-American artists in the US and a leading advocate for the role of African-American art in national culture. He died at the age of 88. Well, now we can go to Vietnam for a look at how the communist government there is using art propaganda to spread messages about its fight against COVID-19. It's part of a competition run by the Vietnamese government to keep people informed and uplifted. 75-year-old painter Tran Duy Tru was one of many artists chosen. He has spent his life making propaganda for the communist government and says it is the responsibility of an artist to reflect the times they live in. I got the invitation from the Ministry of Culture to design propaganda pictures for COVID-19, which had been spreading in Vietnam and the world. I had to stop all my other works to focus on painting those propaganda designs, as it is not only the responsibility of the artist, but also to make people understand and win the fight against COVID-19. The design and message of these pieces don't just reflect the present day. They are a lesson from history, too. Colorful graphic lines were common in Vietnamese propaganda posters when the country was invaded by the US in the 1960s and 1970s. They'd include uplifting messages for fighters and promoted the values of socialism. I think in the field of propaganda, the artists were seen as soldiers fighting the enemy during our war against the Americans. Now, with the fight against COVID-19, artists can also be seen as fighting in that battle, and they have to draw the best pictures to make people understand and win against the COVID enemy. In this Nairobi slum, artists are hard at work doing just that, with graffiti. Brian Wanyande and Antony Mwelu devised a COVID-19 education campaign in some of Nairobi's most densely populated slums. Their work aims to educate all types of people, from residents who work at home to taxi drivers. This painting urges people to use mobile money. Trying to sensitize guys is like even when you're doing your Buddha Buddha operation, it's good to, you know, we go, we move away from the cash system, we go towards uh, the mobile money. So basically today I was painting uh, these two individuals. One was a Buddha Buddha driver. And the other one is uh, Mama Mboga. Mama Mboga is like a woman who like, uh, sells uh, groceries on the side of the road. But it isn't easy. Social distancing is almost impossible, and working from home is a luxury for many. 
Nonetheless, they try to reach as many people as they can. All the resources we use from this campaign, we, we, we get them from our own pocket, which is becoming a very big challenge because there are so many places in the slum where we can go and further put the message. I would really, really urge so many people to, to come right now and work with us together. As coronavirus continues to take hold of society, artists are joining the fight, doing what they do best. OK, let's take a look at some other COVID-19 related stories that you may have missed. Scientists at the University of Oxford in the UK say they may have results of a trial vaccine by mid-June. Hundreds of people volunteered to be lab rats to test the experimental drug to prevent COVID-19. The university researchers are partnered with the drug firm AstraZeneca. The next phase will be, if this vaccine works, making sure there is enough of it to go around. They're expecting to make 100 million by the end of the year. AstraZeneca said they will sell the drug at cost price while the pandemic is still with us. So nice to know they won't be profiteering off it yet. Now this is a queue of people three kilometers long to get food parcels in South Africa. They're living in an informal settlement just outside the capital Pretoria and the majority of the people are illegal migrants. The country has one of the most stringent lockdown restrictions in the world making it impossible for these people to find odd jobs to make a living. Tennis players and some celebrities are going to play Mario Tennis Aces at this weekend for charity. It's called the Stay at Home Slam and will be hosted by Facebook Live Gaming, where you can also watch it if that's something that you like doing. Now spare a thought for the unsung victims of the lockdown. Critics, movie critics, food critics, art critics. What happens if you can't go to the cinema, restaurant or galleries and then write about your opinions? You rate video called backgrounds, of course. I'll give this one seven out of 10. Also, it's been pointed out that the number of copies of the Thornbirds on my side table kept increasing. At one point, there was one copy, then two, then a third copy seemed to appear out of nowhere. It was very strange. So we had our guy uh, come to check it out, and he said it's pretty common in an old attic to have an infestation of what he called miniseries books. And now for something very different. NASA has released this animation showing off one of the cool toys they're going to send to Mars. This little helicopter is called Ingenuity. It's due to blast off as part of the space agency's mission to Mars this year. It weighs just under two kilos and its rotor blades are 1.2 meters long. It's solar powered, has two cameras and has Wi-Fi, of course. It's due to land on the red planet on the 18th of February, 2021 and will carry out experimental missions once there. It will also conduct the first ever powered flight in the Martian atmosphere. This is all part of NASA's future plans to send people up to the red planet one day. And that will be all from the Newsfeed team. Do reach out to me with your questions, comments, complaints, and suggestions. You'll find me at Kamali Melbourne. You'll find us 24-7 on YouTube. Subscribe to that channel. Follow me on Twitter. Stay at home. Evda Kal. See you tomorrow.